This is Tara. Tara doesn't have diabetes. Tara is wearing a Libre 14 day CGM. Tara, do you have type one diabetes? No, I do not have type one diabetes. Do you have type two diabetes? I do not have type two diabetes. Why are you wearing a CGM? Because you put it on me. Okay, so I had Libre 14 day sensors that were gonna expire and I'm using the Libre 3 now. I didn't need them. So I thought, let's put one on a non-diabetic and see what their blood sugars are actually like. But get this, Tara's A1C is 4.4%. Do you wanna punch me in the face now? Yes. <laughs> okay. All right, we're gonna dig in and look at Tara's blood sugars from the last two weeks. So the first night with Tara's CGM, we went out to dinner. I had a salmon Caesar salad, no croutons, just a lot of dressing and a lot of greens and a lot of salmon. I had two orders of steamed broccoli, no butter. I added salt and I think I had some seitan on that for my protein. An hour after eating, here's what our blood sugars look like. Matching, but that didn't last for long. Mine continued to go up a little bit, whereas Tara's hung out in the 130s and then gradually came back down to being perfect around 95 for hours. The funny thing is we were both also drinking an alcoholic beverage that had some sugar in it. I had a Cosmo with a sugar rim. I had a whiskey amaretto. An hour later, even though I was trying to stay on top of that amaretto, my blood sugar kept going up. Her blood sugar just hung out perfect. And her blood sugar hung out at like 126. It never went higher that night than 134. In fact, in my two weeks of wearing my CGM, I never went higher than 134. That's pretty annoying. However, the next morning I had two lows. Poor, poor Tara and her low blood sugars. <laughs> she didn't eat breakfast like right on time and she'd been running around doing a lot of exercise. Her blood sugar went down to 67. Is that dangerous? Probably not because your liver is gonna do what it's supposed to do, kick in and give you some glucose. I had five gummy fish because that's what you would have. You got to treat the low with candy? I treated my low with You're candy. You're not diabetic! But I wanted to see if it would work and it did. Okay, but when we have a low blood sugar, we feel terrible. We get sweaty and shaky and like our brain feels like it's just melting. Tara, did you have any terrible symptoms with your low? I actually did. I felt very lethargic and tired and I wanted to stay in bed. And I tested and boom, I was low. So I guess she felt a little lousy. For what, like five minutes? Yeah, until I treated the low. So then a couple days later, Tara came over and we had chips and hummus. Guess how high her blood sugar went? I'm 119 and rising, that's actually high for me. 119 was as high as her blood sugar went. I mean, I'm glad for Tara that her pancreas works so well, but I have to tell you, I was so frustrated watching how easily her blood sugars just stayed in range with really no effort. I mean, that's not fair to say. She works really hard to exercise every day. She eats a lot of really healthy foods every day, but so do I. I exercise a lot and I have to work so hard to keep my blood sugar in a much broader range than her like 67 to 134. 134 is super high for her. She almost never went over 120. Actually, most of my blood sugars were under 100. One night we went to this really yummy brick oven pizza place. They make their dough from scratch. It's not greasy. It's super fresh, amazing ingredients. So good. Here's how our blood sugar management went. I took tons of insulin trying to, you know, get ahead of the carbs of the pizza. I took inhaled insulin when I started eating and I took an injection of Novolog for that slow digestion of all that pizza crust. I didn't take anything. She did nothing. Tara's blood sugar went up to 133. That's it, that's as high as it went. My blood sugar went up to 150. I freaked out and I was like, oh my God, I need more insulin for this. And then I crashed a little bit and I went back up to 150 and then I went back down and I just kind of rode a roller coaster. It wasn't crashing every time. It was mostly between 150 and 90, but I was working so hard to keep it there. So hard. I'm using multiple types of insulin. How many types of insulin do you use? Whatever my pancreas produces. Ugh. So we all know how hard it is to eat cereal, highly processed 
junk really and manage our blood sugars. No matter how much insulin we take, it just never goes the way we think it will. Well, I did an experiment. I had some Fruit Loops. Tara's blood sugar went up to 122 after eating a bowl of Fruit Loops at her work. How much work went into that, Tara? Didn't pre-bolus. I didn't take <laughs> You didn't pre-bolus? <laughs> no. Of course you didn't pre-bolus, you insulin producing jerk. A week later, we had the exact same meals and the exact same beverages. So we had a salmon Caesar salad. I had seitan with broccoli. Yay! I kept up with the non-diabetic that time, at least for a split second. Who knows how long that really lasted. This is Tara's daily pattern, which takes all of the days she was wearing the CGM and creates a graph so that you can see all the blood sugar levels. Take a look at this. <laughs> Whoops. Hey, I'm 159. I need some insulin right now. Hold on. I took a small dose of a Frezza inhaled insulin. It's going to bring that rising blood sugar rate down so fast. But let's get back to why we're all so mad. Look at all these lines. They really sit around less than 100 most of the time. Like, 99% of the time. Take a look at Tara's time and range. Her blood sugar was between 70 and 140, 99% of the time. 0% over 140 and 1% 1 below 70%. You know why my blood sugar is rising? Because her perfect blood sugars are making me mad. So Tara's A1C is 4.4%, which is actually even a little low for a non-diabetic. If you use the calculator that people with diabetes are supposed to use, where you take your A1C, you put that in, it gives you an estimated average glucose level. That doesn't really apply to a person without diabetes. Tara's A1C is so low, not because she's having low blood sugars all the time. Clearly we saw that she's only below 70 1% of the time in a two week period. Her A1C is so low because she is rarely ever over even 125, let alone 130 or 140. Her blood sugar was below 100 most of the time. Here's a look at my time and range. Right now I've got 3% below 70, 83% in my target range, 11% between 180 and 250 and 3% over 250. And my last A1C was 5.7%. We both work really hard to try to manage our health every day. It's a big part of our lives. We talk about it, we think about it, we prioritize our free time for our health. Okay, so the moral of the story is that managing your health is a lot of work. It's not easy, it's not easy as a non-diabetic, although I mean, come on, it looks a lot easier. But wait, really, I just wanna tell you that I'm really mad at how perfect her blood sugars were all the time without effort. And you know what? This thing is expired, I'm over it. Ah, my precious! <laughs> okay. Let me wash that for you. Tara, I think you're going low. <laughs> no! Don't worry, that was just a demo glucagon pen. There's no needle, no glucagon. And she doesn't go low, she doesn't even have diabetes. Tara, look away for a minute. Should I be scared? That's an insulin pod, baby. <laughs> now you're diabetic. Don't worry, there's no insulin in there. It's just a demo pod. Now let's see how she likes sleeping with that on.